This drill will stop your fat shots forever. Guaranteed. So how this drill's gonna work is, it's so simple. Number one, we're gonna talk about how we stop it on those short little stubby chip shots. And then how you can actually apply that to your long game. Double bubble, double bang for your buck, this tip's got you sorted. As well as if you're bothered about short game and you've had that question, how do I choose what lofts to have on my wedges? It's a tough subject, isn't it? Now's the right time, if we're gonna get some new wedges, to get them in, get them in the bag, get used to them, ready for the 2021 season. So, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I choose my wedges. We are at home, and the slippers are back on. But nevertheless, what we're about to talk about right now remains the same. This cone is our golf ball. Now, whether we're hitting a chip shot or an iron shot, the premise of what I'm about to say is the same as well. So what we're looking to control is, imagine this is our arc of our golf swing. Down the line, it would look very much like this. Face on is what we're bothered about today. It would look very much like this. Now, what we're looking to control is the bottom of the arc. Now, people that are catching it fat, bottom of the arc's behind. No, no, we, we don't want that. What we're looking to control today is getting that bottom of the arc to the point at which this goes into the ground, past the golf ball. That is how we hit down on it properly. Bottom of the arc pass, descending angle of attack, that is how we stop those fat shots forever. Now, the first drill, we're gonna look at it for the short game option, and this is it. Now, as I said before, this cone is our golf ball. Two reasons, one, um, I could be very tempted to hit it, and I would get in the bad books for that, not good. And number two, the ball will probably roll around. So what we're looking to control right now is, is a feeling where we can actually hit some shots, whether this is something you do in your garden, or you're brave enough to do it at home. Hit the thumbs up button if you've actually thought about doing some practice at home, inside. Whether, you are, whether you're in the world right now where you've got snow where you can't get on the golf course, or you're in the UK and we, we can't. We're looking for a drill that we can control getting that bottom of the arc past the cone, or past the golf ball. Really having that feeling of our ground interaction being here. Now, for some people, that this will just cause us to get a little bit steep and a little bit choppy down at the golf ball. We don't want that to happen. We want to maintain what good things we've got in our chipping game. But what this drill is, and the premise of this drill, is this, really nice and simple. What I want you to do is line the golf ball up in the middle of your stance, point number one. All I want you to do is cross the right leg over the left. Now look what this has done. So yes, the ball's a little bit back in our stance, we may need to shuffle that ball forwards, but have a look where my sternum is now. My sternum is still past the golf ball. Now what this is gonna help me control is that feeling of my weight staying left through the shot. Right, left-handed golfers, we would just simply do the opposite. But also, this is gonna help me get that feeling of pivoting around that front point, which ultimately gets me controlling the bottom of that arc past the golf ball. Simple, so simple. Just try it now. Get up out your chair at home, wherever you're watching this video, golf club in your hand, and you'll realize how your sternum is staying focused in front of the golf ball. That is what we want. So simple. Line it up in the middle of the stance, cross the right over the left, and then just shuffle the ball forward so it's now in the middle of your stance, but your sternum is nicely ahead. We can start to really control that golf ball, get that confidence back into the strike. That is number one, first part of today's drill. Don't forget, we're gonna talk about lofts. We're also nicely gonna talk about how we take this a long game as well. But before that, I think it's a good time that we get into these lofts, right? Now, it's a big question, isn't it? It's a big investment. How do we choose the right equipment for our game? Now, obviously there are so many brands out there and the first question is, I think you've got to like the look of that brand. You've got to try it out if you can. I know quite a lot of manufacturers now, when you go for a club fitting, you can actually go and try the wedges as well, which is absolutely fantastic and I would highly recommend that. So number one, find a brand and find a club that you like the look of. You've got to do that. Does, and in some ways, I'd take all prejudice away from 
Names, just go with what you like the look of. Doesn't have to be the most expensive, doesn't have to be the cheapest. Just go with what you like the look of. So wedges that I carry, I carry a 58, a 54, and a 50. I also do carry a pitching wedge and that comes part of my set. Some people actually prefer to carry a 47 or 48 of what I kind of call a specialist wedge. I personally don't like to do that. I find that I don't get as much perch on the golf ball with that. So that's not something that I like to do. Now, you'll notice there, I've got four degree increments between each wedge. And I do this because it's something that I've always done. So I first got my first wedges, I actually went 60, 56, 52. But what I found was that 60, I just wasn't using it. I couldn't hit any full shots with it. I couldn't hit any medium shots with it. It was just pretty much redundant. 58 was a game changer. That two degrees aloft made me feel a lot more comfortable. And actually, it's become my most used wedge. So what should you take into account? I'm gonna tell you right now, these are the factors. But before we do that, I wanna know what lofts and what brand of wedges you're currently using. Smash those comments down below. So you know, I carry 50, 54, and 58. But what do you carry? Brand and loft increments. Now, these are the factors that you've got to take into account. Number one, have a consistent gapping between each of your wedges. I use four degrees. Now I use this for the benefits around the green. I also use this for consistent yardages on those more fuller shots. It's really valuable. Too close together, one wedge may become redundant. Too far apart, you're gonna have a big gap between each of those clubs where it becomes a bit of a problem yardage. I then would choose a club that has a higher bounce, potentially your most lofted one for your bunker shots. It's gonna really help that club glide through that sand and not dig. You've also gotta take into account the conditions of the golf courses that you play on. Is the ground firm? can only do that in here outside it'd be like squelch 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 um, if it's firm you potentially don't want all your clubs to have a reasonable amount of bounce on if it's wet you could get away with a little bit more bounce remember if you've got a high bounce and the ground's firm opening that face is going to expose that leading edge so if I said to you choose a consistent gapping find a brand that you like the look of number three then just look at what conditions you play in these factors are all massive. And if you want to look a little bit more pro, if we can, go with all the same brand. And like I said at the start, it doesn't matter what brand that is. So let's get into how you actually apply this to those longer shots. And you'll be amazed that you're, you're probably already doing this. Nevertheless, watch it. Taking this to your long game. There's one thing I just want to show you before we do that. So what I've got here is my red line, which is my ball to target line. I've got my yellow line, which I want you to feel works always in and around. And that's going back to our woggle. That's going back to our woggle of, or noodle, I think. I've got so much stick for calling this the wrong thing. Woggle, noodle, you know what I mean by now, all right? <laughs> So we mentioned about the swing always working around us. Now, as a tip to help us improve our short game, don't fight the woggle. Get the woggle to touch down just past the cone, but allow it to work inwards on its arc. It's its natural arc, it wants to work that way. So if we applied that to the first show that we said, over, ahead, move the cone slightly forwards, make those swings, but look how my club is working inwards of my red line, down sort of somewhere towards the yellow, really get a good feeling of not fighting the arc, that's gonna expose those bad strikes. Trust the arc. Now, let's get into how you can apply this to the long game. So I've spoken about this before on the channel. We're talking about, again, remember this at the start, how do we get that arc ahead of the golf ball? Think about your chipping setup. Not when we're crossing it over, I look like I was doing some dancing there, didn't I? <laughs> um, but essentially, what we want to have an impact in that long game is those hips open and those hands ahead. Okay, so if we think how we set up to the chip shot, and if we were doing this as a general way, we'd have the lower half slightly open and the hips slightly open to the shoulders. So if I was doing this hitting it backwards towards you, multi-use for this one, Shoulders would want to be down the red, hips want to be, and feet want to be down the yellow. So that is where we want to be. And my weight's now on my left hand side. That is where we want to be when we're chipping. Where do we want to be at impact? Hands ahead, 
weight left, shoulders parallel to target, hips open to target. So you can really see how taking this concept of, okay, well I can do it with my chipping, start with a short chip, go more into a pitch, and blend it into hitting full shots of learning how to rotate our lower half open to our upper half, or hips left, shoulders parallel, and that's how we take this from a short shot into a long shot. We're learning to take that the weight on the left hand side at impact, we do it, we premeditate it when we're chipping. We've got to learn to apply that when we're hitting those longer shots. It's so simple. You can use this concept, get it set up at home, use it to learn how the arc works. Point number one, try it with the foot across, point number two, and number three, go from a normal little narrow stance for a chip and build it up, build it up, and build it up. And by the way, you will get to a point where it's like, that doesn't feel quite good. Take that step back, go back to that short shot and build up to that fuller shot of learning those points. If you can, for the full shot, get our hips open, get our weight into our left hand side and our hands ahead, we are not gonna fat the golf ball. If we're more weight 50-50 or even on our back foot, hands behind the golf ball, this is the fat territory. No longer take that. Build it up from the short shots. I have you covered. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're enjoying these home tutorials. It's member, it's your bit of sanctuary for five, 10 minutes that's gonna really change your game. Let's stop fatting the golf shots. If you did enjoy this content, please smash that subscribe button and see you tomorrow. Don't forget, Sunday swings.